Hi, I'm Warren Jones, and welcome to the Intelligent Computer Podcast, where we talk about stored purpose computing and the intelligent computer. This week, we'll lead off with our four most boring episodes. These are explanations of the key terms that you will need to understand as we move into more exciting episodes, and they will be more exciting, I promise. So thanks for joining us, and welcome to the Intelligent Computer Podcast. First topic we'll be discussing, of course, is stored purpose. This will weave its way through all of the uh, presentations we offer over the next few months. Stored purpose is the mechanics of intelligence, and it's the basis, our implementation of a technology that we call EMMA, or existence model architecture, that is the foundation for everything we do. EMMA has two sisters. Uh, these are core technologies that are part of store purpose. One of those sisters is GIA, the general intelligence algorithm. Uh, this is the heavy lifting behind the computational processes that make um, intelligence possible. Um, so this is the intelligence processing cycle. Mika is another topic we'll talk about, the multi-level intelli intelligent cellular architecture. This is the construction cycle, the means for a system to sense the world, to um, compose action, um, and for biological systems to actually synthesize the necessary proteins or cellulose they use to, to build themselves. Intelligence, we'll be talking about intelligence from a very low level. What makes intelligence? Um, how does a system that is intelligent work? So we'll talk about the concepts of understanding, action and sensory processes that occur to make intelligence possible. And we'll look at it in many different directions, from the directions of the major processes such as Mika and GIA, um, as well as from the specific functional areas, the outcomes as we call it, related to each area of intelligence. We'll get into topics such as fabric, the context fabrics, that is the basic for basis for information. Um, agency, these are the equivalent of um, little intelligence processing entities within each, each computer, and we'll talk about those. Experience, how agents capture information as experience. Reality, which is now time processing as compared to prediction processing, because that's one aspect of intelligent systems. They predict everything, and then at reality or time now, then they align themselves es essentially with what they've predicted. And it's a good part of learning as well. Um, interaction, we'll talk about how uh, agents interact with, with their customers, their clients, which include people, of course. And then learning, we'll talk about how smart systems learn over our coming episodes. One of the foundational information components that you'll see in the fabric is a goal. And um, we'll talk a lot about goals, the existence model function, and um, how a, an intelligent entity will align its states, uh, the states called self, with identity, the, the, the recorded definition of what it believes itself to be. And we'll look at goal from a couple different perspectives, including the very practical perspective of how a goal interacts with the synthetic file system and how uh, uh, an, an intent for action can be expressed into the real world, and then measurements brought back and compared against the forms that define identity. We'll talk a bit about learning and the various different processes that allow a system, once it's detected coincidence or prediction failure, to improve the underlying forms that it maintains and become smarter. Uh, this is a facility that is advanced, won't be in early intelligent systems, and in many systems, simply because there's this need to control change, um, they'll never learn. We'll talk a bit about existence and the model, how it aligns from the mechanical world, which of course we're working to instantiate, and the, the biological world, where there, there are one-for-one -one components between stored purpose and what you'll see in the cellul cellular genetic biological world. Technology, we'll talk a bit about technology and how that is perceived differently in the world of intelligent computer. 
uh, specifically, we think of technology in terms of uh, an iPod or a laptop. We're in the world of computational intelligence. You have to think of technology from the perspective of, of everything that is used to accomplish a task. So where you see the iPod in your hand, we have to see the, the iPod, the hand, the, the tendons, the wrist, the elbow, all of the components that go into enabling a, a system to express itself as action. We'll walk through the process of cognition and, and the application of context. And context is a topic that is um, essential to all aspects of intelligence and, and as in both biological and mechanical terms. So we'll talk about that often. Platonic forms are the base information structure. As we map information into our mind, there are these forms that allow us to capture all aspects of the information. And we then map those forms into what we call a con context fabric that allows us to uh, retain that information. So we'll talk about platonic forms in many different ways. One of the ways we'll look at it is um, from a component perspective, the various different hypergraphs that exist within the platonic form that allow us to define the catalog of symbols that are related to the form, coincidence within the form, and those are relationships between various symbols, the other causal relationships that may include state domain definitions, which is a fairly complex topic, but we'll be able to uh, go through that in a, in a manner I think that's pretty understandable using the, uh, the law and grass scenario. And we'll talk about shape and shape graphs, which is um, pretty interesting, especially when you look at the perspective of um, using music to create shape graphs. And then we'll talk about how forms connect with technology in the form of transformations, media, controllers, and sensors. And in the mechanical world, we leave out one of the very important components of technology, which is synthesis. And that's something that you'll see in biological cellular architecture, which is not in Mika as we've defined it. And then finally, you'll see how uh, forms that connect externally with other forms through ancestry. And I think we have an example coming up for you here. Um, in platonic forms, you'll see how, we'll show how they, the forms themselves are mapped against the hypergraph, which is essentially data. And interestingly enough, the data that is in the hypergraph, we believe is um, very comparable to the data that you'll find in chromatin. In other words, the, the, the basis behind um, genetic material in every cell. So we'll show how that works in the machine world. And of course, as we continue to develop the science, uh, we'll be working with folks on the biological side to see just how close um, our design, because uh, it's the only way we figured out how to make a machine intelligent, uh, aligns with biological design. This is um, just an example here of symbolic storage where, as we've mentioned, forms define um, all that we know. You know, what we know about um, flexing or, or growing an arm um, to uh, how to uh, understand Romeo and Juliet. All of that information can be placed in forms. And a, an important part of that is the conversion of symbolic information into this hypergraph structure that's stored in forms. And, and what we show here is just one of the various methods. Here we're processing a scene where essentially we use a logarithmic whip and run it around the room. And then based on that whip, we bring information in in a symbolic fashion that looks just like a little shape. And actually that's fairly similar to um, the radar systems uh, I used as a naval officer. But here we've extended it on various different levels from uh, shapes, scenes, um, time progression, um, all the way up to the every symbol that you might need to progress or to intake as part of an intelligent system.